Hello and welcome back to the Element 14 community. My name is Mark. Today I'm going to show you my workbench, which is rather empty. So here's the thing. I order parts from all over the world and they basically arrive randomly. Right now I'm still waiting because I'm not sure if the package has arrived. I mean, the mailbox is just outside, but there's no way of telling if the package is there except for going there and checking it. So instead of checking it the whole day, I decided to upgrade it. So we're going to build a, a ESP32 camera system that you can use to send you a message uh, using Telegram and a Telegram bot. Uh, it will send you a photo of the package or if you prefer, you can take a photo of the mailman. That's totally up to you. Like I said in the introduction, we're going to use an ESP32 module. It's not a regular one I'm always using, but this time I'm using an ESP32 cam with an attached camera. We will be able to take a photo of, our, of the package that has just been dropped and send it to your Telegram. I'm going to show you how to program it because the programming, we will use an external programmer to uh, program the ESP32 cam module this time. And other than that, there's not much to it. So let's get started. So I prepared some parts. Of course, we have the ESP32 cam board with the camera. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to use an external antenna. I also included a power connector and a switch that we will put in the, in the housing that we can use it as a doorbell if wanted. It's actually the trigger switch to which we also will hook up the switch from the mailbox. I picked a nice housing. You can use any housing you want, of course. And I already prepared some, uh, some markings in it where to put the camera. The thing is, the camera has an online LED for flashing. Uh, we do want to have that on the outside. So what I'm going to do, my plan, is to put a board in here upside down, drill a hole at exactly the place where the LED is, and then we'll hook up the camera in there. In order to radiate the light from the LED to the outside, only drilling a hole won't be enough. So I also uh, cut a little piece of uh, acrylic staff and I will put that in the hole that I will drill and use it as a guide for the lights to come up. So basically we're looking at a, a housing, an antenna that you may use or may not use, a switch, a power connector, a deflector, a light deflector. One thing I should tell you, if you're planning on using the external antenna, there's a little thing you need to change on the board. For that you need to take a close look at the connection of the antenna on the board because just below it there's a little jumper and i uh, recommend you use a microscope for soldering it because it's a very small component and you need to change it you see three markings and now the jumper is set on two of them and you need to change it from the middle to the right you actually just need to mirror it and then it's hooked up to the external antenna again if you don't need it you can work just fine without an external antenna it all depends on the strength of your wi-fi signal The first thing we're going to drill is the hole for the camera. I already put down the markings and the second one for the switch. And then of course we, we need one for the antenna and the power input and we're going to put that right here. Like that. Now first we're going to make the hole for the camera which is basically 10 millimeters. Be careful not to drill in your hand and of course we'll need one for the small switch. And don't forget, if you're going to uh, hook up your mailbox and you will use an external switch, of course you'll need a cable entry for that too. So basically the camera will go in there and the switch will go in there. So this is about what it's going to look like. And of course we have the little hole for the LED. Yeah, I did put on a marking. Like so. And theoretically, if we put in the board the way I intend to, it's like this, then it should be right where the light is. So that's perfect. Well, I need to shorten that stuff, that's for sure, but that's exactly what's going on. We have a diffuser that will go on the LED. Now I put everything in place, replace the connector for the antenna, for the power, the switch is in place, I even placed a little diffuser after uh, shortening it in length. And basically we're going to place the camera now. I'm going to put this upside down. This one goes in here. And I'm just going to apply some double-sided tape to put the ESP in place. Uh, or maybe uh, you can use some 
non-conductive putty. That will work. So the wiring is not complicated and only takes four small wires uh, and a capacitor of uh, at least 100 microfarads, 5 volts or higher. And we're going to use the capacitor as a buffer on the power supply. So this is the first thing I'm going to apply. Put some tin on there and then we'll just carefully mount it. We don't need to create a PCB with these little components. Next is the ground wires. I have two. I prepared two because uh, we'll be wiring the switch and power connector like so. That's the ground. Next is the plus 5 volts. And we're going to hook up the power. And first let me do the switch. For that I'm going to twist the wires because I love twisting wires. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! If this is your first time using the Arduino environment with an ESP32 board, you will have to install the appropriate libraries. So programming the ESP32 CAM module is a bit more complicated than programming the ESP32 DevKit one that I used in my previous videos. And it has to do with the fact that the ESP32 CAM module doesn't have an onboard USB. You will need to use an external FTDI program. And besides, you also need to set a jumper on the board or basically connect a IO pin to ground enable programming mode. If you watched my previous video, then you know that there is a fast way of programming the ESP32. It's called web browser programming. I'm not going to get into details. If you want to know what it's all about, check out my previous video. But I did create a possibility to program your uh, USB 32 CAM device using a web browser. Uh, I will put the link below. So if you're just uh, after a quick build and you don't want to change any firmware, you can use that link to program your USB 32 quickly. So you're going to start your Telegram on your cell phone, or in this case, I did on the computer, and you're going to search for Botfather. And you're going to click it. Botfather is a tool to create your own bot that will be used to communicate with our ESP32. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say slash new bot and you press enter and then it will just follow the steps. It will ask you okay new bot how are we going to call it? Uh, I know many names are taken so I'm just going to take one obviously that is not likely to be taken. Good. Now let's choose a username for your bot. It must end in bot. And we're going to make it I am great bot. This name has to be unique. So yeah, sometimes it happens it's already taken. Let's try another one. I am great bot. Yeah, that's accepted. Now, once that is done, this is important. You have to copy this one. It says use this token to access the HTTP API. We really need that, so make sure you copy that to another document so you can paste it later. It's very important that each character in here matches uh, whatever you're going to type later. I'm going to see my bots now, and there should be one which is I am grade 38 bot. This one. Click it. Here it is. You click this one, and this is important. You press start because without pressing start, it will never work. You have to start it one time and one time only. Now it's ready. So another thing we need is the uh, our user ID. For that, you're going to search for ID bot. You click it and then you slash type get ID. And there's your ID number. So this number is also important. Together with the token number and the ID number, and we can enter that in the Wi-Fi manager later. So those two are important. So when the Wi-Fi manager starts, we see the name of the temporary network we created. It's new test access point. Of course, you can change that in the in the sketch if you want to. First thing you need to do is click configure Wi-Fi. Here you can enter your telegram token and your ID. And for the time zone, you can change this. It's very important that you select a network and enter your password so that it can be saved. 
because if you don't, none of this will be saved. What happened here is now, if I press save, it's going to save those parameters and you wait until it's all started. And then here it will confirm saving configuration. Now you know it's in there, your configuration is safe. Now, if you didn't enter your Wi-Fi credentials, you forgot because you think it's already filled out, then this will not happen and it will not save. So it's very important to enter those credentials each time. Now, basically, with everything set up, we should be able to receive a photo if the board is powered on and connected to the local uh, internet. And for that, we press the trigger button and it will take a photo. And since I am using a wide angle camera, it's probably catching more than uh, you know I would like, but I'm on it, as you can see a little here. And the photo is of a high enough quality to recognize a package in the mailbox. And that's what this is all about. It also uh, gives you the date the photo was taken. You could also ask it to take a photo manually. If maybe you think you missed it, then you can just ask, take a photo and it will make a new photo by your command. Or you could say help, slash help that is, and it will give you some feedback. It will tell you what this is about, uh, who wrote it, and it will give you the possible commands like photo we just tried. Oh yeah, one more, that's flash. With it, you can turn on the flashlight permanently. There's a, a time delay of 10 seconds between each command. That's important to know to prevent you from being spammed. Like somebody pressed the trigger or the door of the mailbox several times in a row. Then it will only send you a photo once every 10 seconds. After each trigger it will wait at least 10 seconds before sending a new one. So that's convenient. I think I just received a package. What do you know? It's from the Element 14 community. I wonder what's inside. Let's go check it out. So this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember, if you're going to build this project, I would love to hear your experiences. Um, you can tell us uh, at the Element 14 community. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them there and I will do my best to answer all of them. We'll put the link below, of course. It's also nice to visit the Element 40 community if you don't have any questions. Take a look around because there's a lot of useful information there. And besides information on this video, there is a lot of more videos you can find there. Take a look around and tell us what you think. And see you next time.